hello everyone and welcome to another video today we are actually covering project melody on the rio how are you doing today amir uh, i'm doing pretty good i'm kind of surprised that we're seeing project melody on the rio they're typically known for the kacha as of late um i think ever since kacha released last season they've just been like nearly only playing kacha so getting to see some rio is a nice change of pace no, absolutely. I mean, yeah, Project Melody, definitely known for their ADCs in general, though. Uh, that is definitely one of the big things. But yeah, Koch has been their main pickup, but re they're, you know, still really, really good Rio. We covered uh, GRAM a little bit ago, but Project Melody, I do believe, runs relatively a similar build, but a completely different playstyle, if I recall. Uh, Yeah, so from watching GRAM, I know GRAM focuses a lot on the, um, basically the spacing of a fight, knowing where to be, when to be there, and a bit less aggressive in my opinion, usually staying on the edge of a fight, but I think Project Melody has been uh, a bit more in the fight going forward, looking for plays that most people just don't see, and it'll be nice to see if, uh, if we'll see any of that this game. For sure, I'm really excited to see this. This is uh, going to be pretty exciting to check out, you know, where uh, Melody goes with this kind of thing. You know, playing with a, an interesting comment. I mean, they went with the Alonzo for the front line, but they have Charlotte as their secondary. So Melly's going to have to pr like carry a lot of the damage for this team as they're not going to have anything but her for that damage output. Yeah, it's going to be kind of surprising to see if we're going to be able to uh, out damage a few of these comps because we have something like Tazia, Chloe, Alonzo, where we've got the first sustain from Alonzo being able to heal from all of his CC and then pressing alt and getting some of that sustain as well and Chloe being able to pump out so much damage especially with Nina attacking as well and then Tazia just weaving around a fight like a lot of these comps are two damage dealers with the exception of team 5 going something some a bit similar to Project Melody's comp with the Camillo, Charlotte and, uh, and Estelle yeah, I mean, Camillo is just a scary character with us, uh, with Charlotte. But I'm, uh, again, I think this is all going to be on Melody. This is going to be the kind of game to watch if you want to know how to carry on Rio, because that's exactly the only way that Melody is going to win this game is by solo carrying this game to victory as the pure damage of the entire team. If they get caught, it's, it's over. They lose the fight instantly. There's no way Alonzo or Charlotte's going to be able to carry a fight if Melody goes down. Yeah, so... As I was saying earlier about Melody maybe playing a bit more aggressive, I don't think we'll be allowed to see that because Melody does have to be the person that is the sole survivor of every fight. If Melody ever goes down first, then the other two have to try and run, but Alonzo and, uh, and Charlotte are not known for their capabilities of running away from a fight. For sure. I, but I'm, you know, in saying that, Imagine if we do get to see Melody play on their aggressive side. Like, I mean, right now you can already see it. Melody's running ahead, trying to catch up to the to the farm, make sure that they're not behind. You know, get those those dogs before another team tries to find it. Not even with their their team right now. So, I mean, we're already seeing Melody's like iconic, really aggressive posture, just trying to keep that tempo going. Yeah, and it was actually really surprising. I thought that the Darko might see one of these, uh, <laughs> one of the two groups, but he just barely skipped out on seeing Melody and then barely skipped out on seeing the Alonzo and Charlotte. Yeah, but now has caught Melody. I mean, we do, we do actually see, like, again, this is like the, this is like the spacing part, completely denying the Darko the engage. And I think now Darko just goes down. Yeah, it was very nice for Melody being able to ult away the Darko from the first time when he was trying to go for the Strider into Q auto. But uh, right after that, when I think the Darko realized he's not going to get in range in time, he throws the E, and Melody throws a second part of R, which is another knockback, and denies the um, the Darko E. By then, the Strider's already run out, and he can't really keep chasing, so Melody just completely removed him from the fight. It is, It, it was kind of... It was just impressive. Exactly. That's the, that's the kind of Rio gameplay that I'm excited to see in this video tonight. Because, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. That's what I want to see from a Rio player, utilizing all of your toolkits to make sure that you were perfectly spaced. And I'm actually pretty sure this Alonzo just got the Meteor as well for them because every team's fighting in beach right now. Yeah, the classic hotel beach, even though we've uh, we've moved where the beach meteorite spawns, it is, uh, it's is—it's never going to change. The second that hotel and beach have, uh, have two objectives spawn, we're going to be contesting both of them at the same time. For sure. And actually, this is a really interesting build. Look at this. So first off, we didn't go... 
our radar immediately. Uh, we actually went Gilly Suit first and Galaxy Steps on Rio. That is a surprising change in the build. I don't think I've seen anyone building Galaxy Steps on any crit based character. I think the last Especially time I've seen Galaxy Rio. Steps is like, what, like Aiden, I think, is like the only character I usually see it on. Yeah, I think Aiden is. He doesn't actually really care about building crit. A lot of his, uh, his damage just comes from his passive and trying to weave in those extra autos and cues. But I, I'm kind of surprised to see we are seeing this is a completely different build than I have seen anyone running. Yeah, Fallen even, Pegasus is not an item I see often. Yeah, I mean, that's an item that we have uh, continuously commented on being a really low statted headpiece that isn't very seen. Yeah, especially for a character like Rio, where she wants a lot of the attack speed, she wants a lot of the crit, so um, I think it's GPNVG is the one that a lot of people have been building alongside, if you just want the attack speed, they've been going stellar, uh, I think it's the, it's the cowboy hat upgrade, I forget the exact name right now, um, but yeah, we're usually seeing racing boots on the, on the boot slot, and then any sort of attack speed upgrade or uh, like attack speed crit upgrade in the headpiece and yeah we're gonna see the radar come out onto the arm piece but this build's changed two pieces we're still going for 100 percent crit as rio is one of those characters that just really loves 100 percent crit and we're gonna see tax skill being bought before we're actually even tax skill too so we have to win this battle zone fight otherwise we lose it right exactly and i mean this is uh this is so interesting incredibly factor that we're going into bz almost full build it's it's kind of incredible. I mean, they had a lot of RNG luck, and now it looks like they're just going to be able to clean up some third parties. The damage that Melly is going to do in this battle zone is going to be crazy. Yeah, we're getting to see the Charlotte ult come out as well. We're positioning away from the Ava, trying to make sure that we're not the man in the middle, as we do have two teams left in here still. But yeah, we're going to be able to knock down this Kenneth as he's not ready for all the damage we have in our build already. I don't think anyone in this lobby forward. is ready for this damage. I mean, like, it's battle, it's damage zone. Every team is in this lobby right now, is, is in this exact <laughs> zone. Yeah, we have, like, maybe one team that decided to sit on the outside and watch, but every team has just come to fight the damage zone. It's not something you see too often, as I know a lot of players are kind of scared of taking damage zone. Some characters will just get one shot out of nowhere, as we're seeing just so much damage come out to the Shu Kai from our longbow form, and then. Yeah, we see Nadine walks up and Melody's able to auto attack them for a couple seconds. They go down. Same thing with uh, with our Carla. Well, exactly. I think right now at this point, a lot of things that we're going to be definitely seeing is the enjoyable side of things of her being able to utilize her capability of stat checking these these targets, right? They've got the Charlotte to keep them up. Melody's got almost full build. They're able to do a ton of damage. But like, look at this. Like, I, Camillo keeps trying to get onto her, but the spacing is so perfect here we're just like playing just out of the range every time the camillo goes in melody just taking that extra step back never just being close enough for him to be able to do anything yeah and then we're getting a uh, a free force core here which kind of surprising because we don't actually need the force core anymore as we're already almost full build i'm assuming we're just going to save up for the blood last item yeah and we did and go yeah, force core on be... the ghost ride yeah, it's a nice upgrade for uh, our Alonzo. I am kind of sad that they changed the Ghost Pride. I think it was the patch maybe after it released, um, where we lost a bit of the Death Shred and we got a bit more damage on it. Yeah, a little unfortunate, but I mean, it was a really powerful chess piece, so definitely understandable. And mm -hmm. I mean, now that they also have this uh, chess piece on the Alonzo, it's just going to help secure the damage that Melly's going to be able to do on Rio now. Yeah, and also Alonzo isn't a character that deals absolutely no absolutely no damage, so hopefully we also get to see maybe a smash totem come out from him as I don't know where the I I, don't know, I just wasn't watching for a bit and I think they got a force core from not sure where. But it doesn't really seem like either of them need it. Yeah, they're trying to figure it out because Melody was trying to give away the meteor when she made the radar as well. Uh, she was going to buy her force car herself, but no one wanted the meteor. So now, like, they're just trying to struggle on getting RNG because they've gotten so much. They're uh, they're just suffering from success this game, where we have too many force cores, too many meteorites. We've just been winning too many fights, and now uh, you might have another one coming up as we have a team running over to us. But I think, yeah, they should be solo. 
Oh, and they're gonna go for some revives here. Melody notices and throws the longbow ult, which is really nice. And we're so much damage coming up from Melody with every auto hitting. Yeah. Thoughts on the, for one, 200 damage. Thoughts on the twin bow. I've never seen twin bow run either, which is kind of interesting because now that's actually 22% life steal that she's currently running on Rio. Um, it is a very confusing build, and I'm st I'd have to look at the numbers, look at the routing a bit more to understand exactly why we're running all of these different items, but. I like the fact that we're running Stellar Steps. I think it's still a, an okay to good item, and it's pretty cheap. Um, and especially if we don't really like any of the other headpieces, then like we have no we have no other choice as we still don't have too many crit pieces in the game. I know we've been getting a few more options, especially this season, but um, Pegasus was one of the OGs, and I think Melody might just be a trying to reminisce in in some good old builds yeah it might also be the factor of it's also the headpiece that they started with and an easy quick slam so even if it's a little less optimized it's more efficient and just be able to quick bam i i want a cheap upgrade and it gets you still to 100 percent right it's not like you're losing anything super drastic yeah we're gonna see another alt come out that one misses but we just it was only chloe main and were able to one shot as I think Chloe Main was being chased up by a Kenneth. Correct. Yeah, they got chased up by Kenneth and then got caught at the at the cam. Yeah, that is very unfortunate for our Chloe, but I don't think that uh I don't think anyone fighting our team over here would have been uh would have been any better. No, for sure. And I mean the RNG in this lobby right now for this team, we have so many four square items, boots and Hermes on both of the supports. You know, we've got the Ghost Bride dress, even Commander's headset, which is interesting because, I mean, that's going to be a really nice proc for Rio. Yeah, we're going to be able to see a bit more damage come out for the Rio as well, giving a lot of damage on auto on every auto attack, which Rio really likes to do as that is her entire kit. Um, some extra sustain coming over for the Rio as well as we get some bonus health every time we auto attack. And it makes me wonder what we're going to build on our Charlotte as... I know a lot of Charlotte players, when they get an ADC, also like to go, oh, we just have, oh, oh, we still have an extra four score. I kind of forgot yeah, about that one. Extra... I guess Persona. <laughs> well, of course, when you have an extra four score, why don't you just go Persona Charlotte? That's a, you need the damage yeah. anyways. Holy, um, this is uh this is an RNG based game. That is kind of crazy. I don't think I've seen also, that. I don't think that they've gotten many RNG drops off of animals either. So a lot of these are just, they fought for something and gotten an RNG an rng piece off of it uh, melody's still saving up for a blood as well like melody's been full build since day two start and and we're also seeing tack three like we could have had a blood here if we didn't go by attack skill and upgrade our attack skill oh for sure I mean, here are the thing is i think uh they got they got some crazy rng i mean it was the tree the meteor then they got like three drops off wolves they got the bz they got the <laughs> alpha uh, or the Omega, it's, yeah, they just, they got objective after objective. Just, like, this is the kind of game that you dream about. Everything goes right, you start winning every fight, you're the carry, and, uh, like, you just feel like the main character of every single fight you take, as we're gonna see another fight come up. Alonzo trying to point forward, doesn't connect. The Rio 3-man ult, though, unable to actually do anything, as I think they're a bit too far away, but... We might be able to see this other team above us. We do know that Cam was just placed recently. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, right? I mean, Melly's trying to find the windows. Just Alonzo wasn't close enough up to be able to follow up that all. But if that follow-up happened, I think they wiped that team. This team is so scary right now. I genuinely think Melody is ahead enough that they can just beat any team on her damage alone, which is exactly what this team needed. This team needed to have Melody super fed and they exactly got that and both of her teammates are tanky enough now that if melody is not focused they're just not going to kill then there's no way alonzo or charlotte's going down as long as melody doesn't stop auto attacking i think every fight is just going to be won. as we see every team in chapel as well i'm wondering if we're going to move over into there or if we're just going to contest this free wick and we also almost have enough for our blood so i don't know if we're going to give our blood over to uh one of our teammates or if we're going to take it for ourselves and upgrade another item Maybe go for the red shoes as we lose the heel cut on the bow if we upgrade. Of and red shoes can uh, make up for that. Yeah, I mean, at this point here, I mean, blood obviously off this wick line is going to go to Melody for the bow upgrade. I mean, it's 
gonna be completely free it looks like but the next part that's really interesting about this is where is she gonna go after that are we gonna get like you know see quack senpai on the death you know a big blood weapon or um. <laughs> are we gonna take the red shoes angle for like you mentioned i think red shoes is the smartest but i wouldn't be surprised if we get quack senpai on that uh on that death, on the death. <laughs> yeah you need uh i mean we were talking about how this team might need a bit of extra damage so getting the death online going for the uh i think it's the red upgrade actually gives hex rather than the blue one yeah plus i mean she's uh, already got 688 amp on a persona like come on let let the girl cook we gotta we gotta see yeah, this. i mean give him some damage i need to see every q start blowing people up that's when that's when the strider strider charlotte's come out <laughs> I don't know if you've seen them, but they've been rocking. <laughs> I haven't seen any lately, but I remember uh, when it started to get popular, it, it just wasn't for me to play with. Okay, wait, they went. They're going on the Alonzo. Oh, uh, I'm assuming we're going to see the prominence come out for Alonzo, as yeah. Yeah, the, the safe The Alonzo pick. arm piece isn't. Uh, yeah, going music box on Alonzo is a very nice item for routing, but. In terms of late game options, he doesn't really need the attack speed, and the amount of health he gets from Music Box he can get from other items, so it's just nice to get transitioned off of that. I know a lot of Alonzo's like to just build a new purple item, but I think if we're just able to get this much RNG, like, why, why build a new purple item when we're going to get a free blood anyways? Well, exactly, exactly. But I think we might not see any combat for a while as it seems like no team wants to go contest us in forest no team in <laughs> the teams in chapel are a bit too scared to make any moves right now and uh i think the rest of the game is yeah on the other side of the map we have a few solos actually no we have no solos we just have some people tping in from uh some alternative places oh and we're actually gonna see this team over here not sure if we're gonna make anything happen because we know, or at least I think Team 6 should know that there's another team in here. Yeah, I mean, it's actually really crazy because, I mean, if you think about what Team 2 has done here, they gated <laughs> Forest, took Wickline, they knew teams were in Chapel because they saw the pings, and every team has miraculously TP'd out and gotten around them somehow, even though this team has been patiently just checking and waiting for Forest for someone to come through. And now that they went into Chapel, these other two teams have magically slipped by once again. Yeah, the second that the strongest team walks in and we're seeing yeah, the wait a meow mint as I think we realized we walked in and every team that was in here decided that they didn't want any of what we had. So they decided to come out. Yeah, a little unfortunate, but I mean, again, I think as soon as we meet a team, it's going to be fine. And I think right now that's kind of the thing. They've got their buys. They've spent their credits. They have their blood crafts, their wick line. They should be really trying to capitalize on this buff and finding teams as much as they can. Yeah, I think we know this team is over here. We might have heard them because Product Melody is positioning for a big fight. And I actually think that this team is getting... <laughs> they are so scared that they are willing to go uptown and just TP out. It's never worth contesting Melody's team as they are, I think, the strongest team in this lobby. They have been not only killing everybody, but they've gotten every RNG item. There's no team that's even close to them in terms of strength right now. It is... It's a scary one to, to play if you see Melody's team. Oh, for sure. And this is a team, because it's a char Charlotte, the, it immediately becomes a stat check challenge, right? The second you face a Charlotte, you have to have the damage numbers to be able to compete against the Charlotte's healing. So it's going to just, you know, that's immediately scary. If you don't feel like you have the damage to win, it automatically puts you in a bad spot. So we'll have to see where these teams come from. I mean, right now, I mean, they're in the middle of every team. So it's going to be a, a bloody brawl here soon in school. Yeah, as you were saying as well with uh, with the Charlotte, we have Charlotte Alonzo. This this team is basically a boss fight. We have uh, Alonzo Charlotte, and oh, actually, we're gonna see Alonzo go in. Let's see if it happens. Alonzo is gonna tank a lot, and Charlotte is going to. Yep, there comes the ult. We're gonna see Alonzo go back. Really high health. The ult comes down. He's full HP again. But Melody is kiting Nikki so well. Bear comes in to stun, but it doesn't matter as we put Nikki to one HP. I don't think that we're going to be able to see... Oh, third party actually coming in. Yeah, but, but I mean, again, matters. like, Melody's facing here is just, is just so clean. Like, she's... Like, and again, the... the Charlotte's able to keep her alive, survive her through a lot of the damage output. This, like, third party coming in, it's a lot of scariness, but they get to the Alonzo? I, I don't think this and team can push them anymore now. Yeah. 
The only scary thing is Melody's actually running out of SP before we're running out of health. I didn't think that was possible on Rio. I thought Rio was a very auto attack based character, but I think when you take fights with a Charlotte and Alonzo, yeah, we're gonna see drinks come out as I think Melody realized we are running out of SP every fight. But yeah, as I was saying earlier, like this team is a very raid boss esque team where you're trying to take down the Alonzo, the Alonzo's getting healed, and then you're trying to take down the Charlotte, the Charlotte's healing everyone. And the second you take one of them down, we go into phase two, where you still have to kill the other two. <laughs> yeah, and if you try to focus the Rio, I mean, Melody is just showing us, like, you don't want to focus her. Like, she's got the spacing to keep it up. She completely zoned out a lot of these teams, made sure, like, they were just out of reach. And, like, right now, this is chaotic. Look at all these teams right now. Yeah, we have almost every team coming in here. We have Alonzo actually running pretty low, but Melody and the, our Charlotte are going to go off to the side. The real ult's gonna go wide, Alonzo going down, but I think we're able to pick up an extra kill. We have enough timer to play this fight a bit slower, but we're just gonna keep going forward as Melody is known for taking some of the, this aggression. Bringing other people pretty low, trying to just outplay the range as we know Carla has to throw her abilities out. She doesn't have guaranteed auto attacks like we do. And yeah, we're just gonna see so much damage coming out. Melody keeps going forward. It doesn't matter. We we showed everyone in this lobby why we have all the rng yeah i mean that damage was crazy and i think it was probably fine I mean, really good the melody play forward there she's like looking trying to pick up the kills from the third party help put that little extra pressure for everything but on top of that it also made it so that no team would second guess to try and check for the down body on the res right melody's playing so far forward right they don't have the information to know where that alonzo is or where that charlotte is and if she's playing that confident there's definitely something up yeah, I think that the team just didn't realize as Melody was playing so far forward that we <laughs> we didn't have that much pressure. We're just trying to fake it till we make it. Our Alonzo came back up and then we were able to do something, but Melody's actually getting taken pretty low here with the Charlotte coming out and oh wait, we're running so far from our team. Charlotte's actually able to find a way to connect her ult with us and with all of that, we're just able to put Aiden down. I don't think that the other Rio is going to have the damage to take our team down and this might just be the win. Yeah, I think this is the win here. I mean, that was like incredible spacing from Ellie again, running away, kiting out the, uh... I can't think, Aiden, I was gonna say Alex, <laughs> Aiden, Aiden character. Yeah, I mean, he I had get such mixed a, up as well. Yeah, he had such a good engage. He jumped in, put a lot of pressure. I mean, Melody was looking low, but it doesn't matter. Again, the raid boss Alonzo can take the 2v1 for a lot longer to let Melody take that time to create that space for herself so that she doesn't need to rely on risking taking that damage, right? Because as soon as Aiden ran out of his tools to catch up anymore, she just turned turned back, turned him down, and it was pretty much over. Well, yeah, guys, that was a fun one to watch. Yeah, well, guys, that is an example of how to play Rio. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.